Okay, so now we're going to look at using Minitab to do the hypothesis, the one sample hypothesis testing. Lab 8 corresponds to Chapter 7 in your textbook. So remember from the lecture on Chapter 7, we looked at several different types of hypothesis tests. We looked at hypothesis testing for, um, for proportion. We're testing the proportion. Um, we looked at hypothesis testing for mean. And then we looked at hypothesis testing for standard deviation. So, um, Let's look at the, let me, let me do the first one with you, All right? So we're trying to see, is there sufficient sample evidence to support the claim that the proportion of all Minnesotans is greater than 0 0.5? Okay, so for our hypotheses, remember equality always goes with the null hypothesis. And greater than does not include equality. So my null hypothesis is H sub 0, P, and usually you put a colon, H sub 0, colon, P is less than or equal to 0 0.5 versus the alternative hypothesis, H sub A, colon, P is greater than 0 0.5. Right, so let's bring up mini tab. Now we're going to go to stat, basic stat, one proportion. What we are given now is the summarized data. And our number of trials, they tell us in this problem that N is 829. And they tell us 51% of these said that they are opposed to photo cop legislation. So we need to find out what is 51% of 829. So 829 times 0.51 is 422.79, so I'm going to put in 423. Now, I am performing a hypothesis test this time, so I'm going to click the button. My hypothesized proportion from both either my null hypothesis and my alternative hypothesis, in both cases, was 0.5 or 0.50, right? We go to options. My alternative hypothesis in this case is... Oops, is a greater than, so proportion is greater than. Notice it says your alternative hypothesis. My alternative was a greater than. This often confuses students, so if you need to go back and listen to the lecture again, go, in, go ahead and do that or read the textbook again. We're starting to get into deep water here, so some of you are going to have some a little, a little more trouble getting these concepts. Greater than. Remember, the method we're going to use is exact. Click OK and click OK. Now notice here, we've already done the hypotheses. The null hypothesis was P was less than or equal to 0.5. And the alternative hypothesis was P is greater than 0.5. We need the test statistic and the p-value. If you recall from the lecture, the test statistic in the approximation te technique is a z value, the, it's the normal approximation of the proportion. But when we're doing the exact method, we do not have a test statistic. I left the test statistic here so that you can see the difference between the normal approximation and the exact value. But whenever you do the exact value, we don't have a test statistic, but we do have the p-value. The exact p-value is 0.289. So you enter in 0.289. Now we're comparing 0.289 to the significance level of 0 0.10. The decision rule said if P is greater than the significance letter le level, we do not reject the null hypothesis. 0.289 is definitely bigger than 0 0.10. So we, the conclusion is do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, now remember, if this is confusing, you might want to go back and read your book again, and you might want to go back and listen to the lecture again, because with this, once we get into hypothesis testing, we are getting into deeper water. But numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 are all the same as what, as what we've done in number 1. 
But number five is the first one. To, we're using a significance level to test the claim that the sample is from a population with a mean. Notice the word mean here. Mean is, now we're going back to the one sample t-test. Because we need to put these numbers in to Minitab. Right, so these are these numbers here stand for lead level. So we call this column lead, and I'm going to put those few numbers in: 5.4, 1.1, 1 1.2, 0. Okay, now, because there is not, and it does not say it's known from another study that the population standard deviation is, and it's very rare that that's given. It's almost always the one sample T. Minitab is one of the few statistical software packages that actually even include a um, one sample Z test. So we go to stat, basic stat, one sample T. In this case, our values are in a column. We click the column in. We are performing a hypothesis test, and we are testing the claim. Let's go back here. We are testing the claim that the sample with a mean greater than 1.5. Okay, so greater than does not include, include um, equality. So the claim is the alternative hypothesis. So the alternative hypothesis is mu is greater than 1.5, and the null hypothesis is mu is less than or equal to 1.5. So our claimed value is 1.5. We go to options, and remember our alternative hypothesis was mean was greater than, so we click that to greater than. It does not matter about the confidence levels. We're not looking at the confidence interval, so we can just ignore it completely. Click OK, click OK. Now, this time we do have a test statistic. Here, look at asks us for the test statistic and the p-value. The test statistic is the number underneath the t, which is 0 0.05, and our p-value is 0.481. And that's what let's go here and here. Now, we're, com we're comparing this to a significance level of 0 0.05. Clearly, 0 0.481 is bigger than 0 0.05, so again, the p-value is greater than the significance level, so our conclusion is do not reject the null hypothesis. Now, is let's answer this question, this last question here. Is there anything about this data set that's suggesting that the assumption of normally distributed population might not be valid? Yes, this is an outlier over here. Look at this. It is significantly different than the other values. We know it's different because the Environmental Protection Agency says that the standard for lead in the air is 1.5. If it was truly a lead level of 5.40, it would have made national news. That is way too high. There have been people just dropping on the streets. So this, out, this is an outlier. It is significantly different than the rest of these values and significantly higher than the standard. So I think we might want to consider that maybe this assumption is not valid. But um, we went ahead and assumed it was, and we did the hypothesis test. So you can do the rest of these, put these values into the column, and then do the rest of them just like I just showed you. See so here, using a significance level to test the mean, using a significance level to test the um, mean, Using the significance level, do, um, we're testing the mean. Here we're testing the mean. Here we're testing the mean. Now, if we want to, hang on just a second. Okay, so um, the reason I paused the lecture for just a minute is I did not, you do not have to do number 13. Um, these simulations are um, fun to do in class, but uh, for the online portion, I don't think you really need to do this one. So you can skip number 13 in this mini tab lab. I'll probably go back through and the, the, um, the lab that you see 
on the portal, I'm going to change it and make sure that this has been omitted so it won't be a question whenever you're doing the lab. Okay, so that's the end of hypothesis testing. Please let me know if you have any questions.